I'm a paramedic for cryptids. Part 3. The Veil. Thins. The city's heartbeat had faded to a whisper, the kind that clung to the shadows and murmured secrets of the old world, a world that Ren and I knew all too well. As we navigated the serpentine streets to our call, the ambulance's radio crackled, a constant reminder that, in the cryptid world, peace was as fleeting as life itself. Ever faced one before? I asked Ren, my grip tight on the steering wheel. The call was for a vampire, and not just any vampire. A noble, dispatch said, one from the old courts. Aye. Ren's voice was a low hum, a sound that seemed to come from another age. Remember, Sean, creatures of the night bear centuries of curses and grudges. Approach with care. The alley where we found her was a gaping maw in the city's facade, a place where light dared not tread. She lay crumpled like a discarded marionette, her skin an unnatural pallor, almost translucent under the street lamps. We approached with the precision of a bomb squad, knowing full well that the injured can be the most dangerous. Her wounds were a grotesque masterpiece painted in silver, a metal lethal to her kind. I worked quickly, removing the shards embedded in her flesh, while Ren's incantations filled the air, a tulpa's chant to ward off the impending hunger that would soon awaken in her. Her eyes snapped open, pools of ancient gold that seemed to pierce through the facade of reality. Help me, she rasped, each word laced with the weight of fallen empires and forgotten wars. We're here to help, I reassured her, my hand steady as I applied a salve of my mother's making, a concoction I hoped would be as effective on vampire flesh as it had been on others. The healing was a marvel, the vampire's flesh knitting together before our eyes, but with her revival came the resurgence of her predatory nature. A guttural growl emanated from deep within her and Ren's grip on my shoulder tightened, a silent command to be ready for anything. We need to move, now, I said, reaching for the stretcher. The vampire nodded, a silent accord struck between healer and predator. As we loaded her into the ambulance, the radio buzzed once more, a frantic voice piercing the night. Unit 19, be advised. Multiple reports coming in, something stirring the cryptids into a frenzy. High alert. The vampire's gaze lingered on me, a chilling depth in her stare. The veil thins, medic, she murmured cryptically. Tonight, the barriers are not as they seem. What lies dormant will awaken, what is hidden will be revealed, and blood will be the least of the spilled secrets. Her words hung heavy in the air, a prophecy veiled in dread. As her strength returned, so too did a sense of impending doom. The growl that had started as a hunger now twisted into a guttural warning, and her eyes darted skyward to the retreating darkness. What do you mean? I pressed, my hands stilling over the now closed wound. What's coming? She tried to rise her movements a dance of grace and power, even in her weakened state. A rupture, she hissed. A tear in the fabric that separates our worlds. The cryptid sense it. They're preparing. The hunters. They've meddled with forces they don't understand. Ren's grip on my arm was vice-like, his usual calm demeanor shattered by the vampire's words. Sean, we need to warn the hospital. This, this could be a catastrophe in the making. I nodded, my mind racing with the implications. With every second that ticked by, the sense of urgency grew. We secured the vampire on the stretcher, her form now still as she seemed to lapse into a state of deep contemplation, or perhaps communication with her kind. 
As we loaded her into the back of the ambulance, I reached for the radio. St. Cyprian, this is Unit 19. We have an urgent message. The vampire. She's spoken of a rupture, a thinning of the veil. All cryptids are on high alert. We might be facing an event, a breach of some sort. The radio crackled with a static that seemed to underscore the gravity of our message. Unit 19, copy that. Alerting all units. Return immediately. We need to prepare. The drive back was a blur of red and blue lights. The siren a wail that now seemed like a harbinger of chaos. We handed the vampire over to the night shift, who moved with an efficiency born of crisis. She gave us one last look, a silent plea to understand the magnitude of what might come to pass. Ren and I stood in the bay as the hospital went into lockdown, a fortress against the unknown. The cryptids within its walls were restless, agitated by an energy only they could sense. And as we watched the horizon, where the first light of dawn promised a new day, I couldn't help but feel it was a false promise. The city was waking up, but so were things that had no name, creatures that dwelled in the spaces between worlds. The veil was thinning, and soon, I feared, we would see exactly what lay on the other side.